Ephesians chapter number one, the first six, I believe the first six verses. We have been wading out into some deep water. All right, some pretty heavy stuff to the church at Ephesus. We've been examining some of these things and will for a while. Starting with verse 1, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from, our, from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he hath chosen us from in him. Okay, pause. The word, remember we, chose, we talked about the word chosen. Chosen us in him when? Before the foundation of the world that we should be holy without blame before him in love. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the, good, to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. Father, again we bow and bring our thanks for this time and this privilege to share. We ask your blessing as we consider these thoughts. The prayer request that we will guide the doctors and the effectiveness of treatments. Lord, we're just so grateful for Pete's recovery. We ask you to continue to bless and walk over him. Bless our service and forgive us for Christ's sake. I pray. Amen. We talked about the fact that we were chosen. When were we chosen? Before the foundation of the world. We all agree that God knows everything. Is that correct? And the fact that God is not in the realm of time, but He is outside of time, hence it's always present with Him. So He is capable of seeing every age, every dispensation, every aspect of humanity from the beginning to the end. It's much like if you had this puzzle on a table, I know there are some who like to do these puzzles, and these small pieces, 5,000 pieces, you have a picture there of what it's supposed to look like. Well, then you work as you put those pieces together to fill in the picture. God's plan of redemption was already a done deal before the world was created. We read about the foundation of the world. It was already created in place. And so, as far as God's concerned, the puzzle was already together and ready to be put into operation. Jesus, our God, saw the cross and his son died for humanity even before the garden was created and Adam and Eve put there. So, the foundation of the world. Now this is a little bit of a challenging part here. The next section of this verse 4, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Do we agree that God is holy? Isaiah chapter 6, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. So that means that He is without sin. He does not have the nature. He does not, um, he does not uh, condone sin. You know, if, if it wasn't for Jesus Christ, we never, we never would 
have a relationship with God all. So what am I trying to say? Paul is saying that we should strive to live a holy and blameless life. We've talked about before how easy it is to destroy a testimony and how difficult it is to ever restore it. But that challenge, let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter 7. 2 Corinthians chapter 7. And we do have some wonderful promises, do we not? 2 Corinthians 7, verse number 1. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and the spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. So we're going to have to do something about this flesh, aren't we? Okay? trying to do something about this flesh and something to keep it in its proper place. Now that makes a lot of good preaching, but boy is it hard to do. In Romans chapter 7, Paul mentioned the difficulty from verse 14 through 25 of what he wanted to do, he wouldn't do, what he shouldn't do, that's what he did. Because the flesh is a problem for all of us. The sin nature is a problem for all of us and will remain a problem until the Lord changes these bodies. Okay. In Ephesians chapter 4, Ephesians chapter number 4, down to verse 20, let's start with verse uh, well, we're going to have to go back up a little bit here. Let's start with verse 20. <clears throat> Everyone remembers why, right? We read the sentence and start with verse 20. But he had not so learned Christ, if so be that he had heard of him, or heard him, and had been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus that you put off concerning the former conversation of the old man. Put off. Okay? Conversation. Man or life. Which is the old man. Which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that you put on the new man which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. What part of us has the nature of God? And that is our spirits, doesn't it? Okay? When he indwells that believer, that believer has the holiness of God within him. Now you can understand why we have such a problem between the flesh and the spirit. Okay, remember Galatians 5, 17, how they are contrary one to the other. So Paul's admonition is that we strive to live a life that is pleasing before God and before others. See? holy and without blame. We could go into several things about that. Let's go to 1 Peter. We'll go ahead and go to 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter number 1. And verse 15. Start with verse 18. Wherefore, forget the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end. 
for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ as obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lusts in your ignorance, but as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. So you can see that the admonition or the uh, admonishment is for us to try to live a life that reflects Jesus Christ in purity, in example, okay? Christianity today is kind of muddled all together. But let's be clear. If we will be like, try our best to be like Christ and do our best to live a life without reproach, then that is what he is writing about in holy without blame. And what is the motivation? Before him in love. Of course, we can talk a lot about love. Love is the very center of all actions with our relationship to God. Now, the next, in verse 5 of our text reading, you need to keep your finger here in Ephesians 1. Having predestinated us. You know, there are some who are afraid to go through this chapter because of fear of being called a child. But when we put this in proper perspective, in proper perspective, since salvation was done before the foundation of the world, is that correct? Then that means that God has already planned what our future will be. I think it's a great testimony to the security of the believer. He is already planning, having predestinated us. Okay. Now, let's go down. Uh, well, I got. We'll do that in a minute. Let's go down to verse eleven. Uh, let's. Well, there's, they're connected again. Well, I'm going to just do verse eleven. I'll break my rule and break into the sentence. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worked with all things after the matter of his own counsel of his own will. We are set. If you have ever made reservations, then you have planned an event or planned your travel. Then you can understand that back before time began, that God offered His Son for our sins. And then He set a plan for those who would believe in Him as far as eternity is concerned. Having predestinated us. Okay? Remember Ephesians 2.10? For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. His plan, his purpose. All right? Let's go to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter number 8. For we know that all things work together for good, but then to love God, and then to be called for His purpose. So God has a purpose, doesn't He? He has a purpose in everything. Verse 29. For whom He did foreknow, He also did predestinate 
to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Okay? Now, did he know you would be saved? In reality, God knew your choice. He knew when you'd make that choice. And he did so with a plan already in place. Let's go ahead and go to the next slide. person's will from the equation. No, it does not. But for those who will receive him, he has already got a plan and a place prepared for us. Okay? All right. Now, adoption. Are we Gentiles? Certainly we are. Well, as Gentiles, God has adopted us as one of his children. I don't have this here. Let's go to Romans chapter 10. I believe it's here. Reverend may have to help me here. Okay. Uh, verse 4, for Christ is the end of the law, for righteousness to everyone that believeth. And I'm not seeing it. I'm looking for that we are children of Abraham by faith. That's what I'm looking for. I thought sure that was chapter 10. that of course, children of Abraham by faith. Well, if that be the case, then we are children of Abraham, being Gentiles, okay? Hmm? What's that? Is it 815? 815, 16, 17, 18, Okay, well, I thought it up there didn't run. Is that what you're talking about? Sometimes. Okay, chapter 8, verse 15. We have not received the spirit of bondage again under fear, 
we have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Have our Father. For the Spirit itself bear witness of our spirit that we are children of God and have children and heirs. Heirs of God and joint heirs of Christ, if so be you suffer with him, that you may be glorified together. Okay. I'm sorry? Eleven one also spoke of descendants of And eleven one. I say then, God hath cast away his people, God forbid. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham. Tribe of Benjamin. Oh, you said Romans 11 1? Yeah. Okay. So that the point is that we are children of God by faith. And hence, we too are joint heirs with Christ. And that we are adopted. Okay? We are adopted. Let's go ahead to Galatians chapter 4. Galatians chapter 4. Let's read verse, uh, I'm going to start. Oh, verse 3. Even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his Son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because we are sons, God has set forth the spirit of his Son, into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. <clears throat> so we are children of Abraham. We are adopted into this plan that God has sent forward. Let's read one more verse of Scripture. Well, we were there. I've got it down here. Why do you know Romans 11? I don't know. Sometimes we're down to Romans 11, verse 11. I say then, they have stumbled that they should fall, God forbid, but rather. Through their fall, salvation is come unto the Gentiles, for to provoke them to jealousy. Now, if the fall of them be the riches of the world, and the diminishing of them the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness? For I speak to you, Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify my office. If by any means I may provoke an emulation them, which are my flesh, and might save some of them. There was an occasion when Paul said, Lo, I turn to the Gentiles. You have deemed yourselves unworthy of salvation, I turn to the Gentiles. Well, now he's saying, look what's happening among the Gentiles. The work that's being done because of the gospel being preached to the Gentiles. Where are you? What happened to you? Okay? The Hebrew people are still God's people. But salvation is required for heaven. So Paul's trying to tell them, you need to understand that the gospel that was preached to the Gentiles and received, you are missing out on 
what God can really do. So we're going to stop there for tonight.